Very good. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, members and guests. This is a regular meeting of the West Shore Photography Club. And of course, this is December the 12th, 2022. I'm Dennis Baker, your host and the president of the club. So we have uh, an interesting uh, competition for you tonight. Bryson Leidick is going to judge for us. But before we get to that, just a few quick notes. We have three new members, and I would like to give them an opportunity to comment at this time. Uh, we have Harry and Spike. Uh, would you guys like to make a comment? They will be right here. Hang Those on. Right. To okay, maybe we can I come to back to my own yeah, computer. To okay. Uh, Spike, you want to make any sort of comment? <sighs> it, introduce yourself. Welcome to the group. Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Spike Spilker, uh, the famous Harry Spilker's father. And uh, he and inspired me to uh, wait a minute that's me right up there he inspired me to uh make pictures again as uh, when i was young i did and i had a dark room and all that kind of stuff pretty good and, uh, now, now you you say that as if harry's the famous one in the family he is the one yeah <laughs> <clears throat> harry is very artistic and hopefully you'll have some uh a chance to see some of his work in the very near future hello harry hi <laughs> very good and uh, we have on board also as a new member, Don Uvic. Don, would you uh, introduce yourself? Give us a couple, uh, uh, a little intro there. Sure, Dennis. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm glad to be a member of the club. I think I was a member maybe a long, long time ago um, for a short period of time. Um, used to spend most of my time with the Harrisburg Camera Club. I was held just about every office there from president to vice president to treasurer to you name it. But um, uh been actively involved with photography probably close to you know over 40 45 years uh had my own business for a while and uh, right now i'm more of a hobbyist but i i do a lot of um a lot of freelance work when the opportunity arises so um i'm really glad to be a member of this group and uh looking forward to participating in some of your activities very good thanks, thanks. and welcome thanks. welcome aboard all thanks. right Friday night, Friday night, we had an exceptional event. Let me tell you, this is one of the highlights of, of my years with the West Shore Photography Club. We had the opening reception for a print exhibit at the Carlisle Arts Learning Center. 94 prints hung. Kathy told me that when we do this again, we'll probably have to limit it maybe to only two prints in, instead of go up to the possibility of three. But it was wonderful, very well attended. Okay, I, I must say, they had refreshments for us, and uh, the quality of the work is just, I was so proud, you know, to go walk around and talk with everybody who was there and see the prints, uh, it's very, very impressive. So if you were not able to make it yet to see, well, go to the reception or make it to see the exhibit, please, please do so. It will be up until January the 14th, okay? Be sure to get the, you know, work your whole way around, see all of the, the images. Kathy Stone is the newly hired uh, executive director, and she did a marvelous job of, of putting this together for us. Uh, so, yeah, please, please visit. Uh, now, as for, in the way of, oh, anybody want to make any comments? I know a lot of you were there. Uh, anything to say about the, the uh, reception? Okay, if you concur, give me a thumbs up. <laughs> yeah, I, I think they do. Uh, Upcoming events, we have a meeting next Monday night, which breaks with our sequence. That means two Mondays in a row. And the reason we're doing that, of course, is because we're coming up on the holidays. We have Christmas and New Year's. So we'll meet next Monday night, but then not again until January the 9th. Okay, so two weeks off after next week. But next week, December the 19th, we are doing part two of our panel discussion. You may remember a couple of weeks ago, there were a few of us that act as panelists responding to questions that you submitted. Well, we had so many questions and we had such a good dialogue that we didn't have time to get through all the questions, but it went so well and we, was uh, you know, accepted so positively that we scheduled a part two, which will be next Monday night at seven o'clock. So I'll get the link out to you tomorrow you know, to that uh, that meeting next Monday night. Of course, it's a, a Zoom meeting just like this is. 
All right. And then uh, just to give you a little heads up on Monday, January the 9th, we're going to try to extend your thinking a little bit, broaden your horizons. Uh, Joe is making arrangements for a videographer to talk with the group about an introduction, just the basics of using your DSLR or mirrorless camera, okay, to take video. And one of the questions Joe asked him to be sure to address is, why would you use your DSLR or your mirrorless camera to do video when it's so easy to do with your cell phone? Okay, so that and other questions, but get a little primer for you on getting into video. All right. Anyone have any pressing questions or comments at this time before I, we get into the main program? Okay, that's it for the wait time. Next, okay, here we go. Competition tonight. Uh, there is no theme. Okay, uh, we have 13 images and the renowned Bryson Leidig is going to do the honors tonight. So Bryson, I will turn it right over to you. Renowned, holy smokes. <clears throat> can no I delay? Can I can I write that down and <laughs> pass it around to people? <laughs> hey, and if you want to do a little intro, there are some new people who may not know you. So why don't you give them a little uh, heads up on who you actually are? Um I'm a, a semi-retired photographer. I did primarily commercial work. My primarily uh architectural was my big personal love although i did a lot of corporate work and um starting in it was interesting because starting in the uh in the uh 80s um i got introduced to an opportunity to photograph uh executives for hershey foods and doing portraits and stuff was never anything that was i considered to be in my wheelhouse but um, I have one of the distinct honors of being one of the photographers who worked for Hershey for the longest period of time. They had a tendency to go three to five years and then find somebody else. Um, it was just a habit that they were into. And uh, I worked for them for over 20 years doing their executives and CEOs and everything. And um, so you never really know what you're going to get called on to do and then what you're going to end up being moderately successful at but i think probably the biggest take for me was that knowing how to manage things like the composition and the lighting and this and that and everything else you can take that information into any field that you want uh, you don't have to be uh, a real specialist in one area and then just simply not do anything else you want to, you want to be as general as you possibly can uh and then take your your information your talents and your knowledge into as many different fields as you possibly can to see uh what you can accomplish i did a lot of very very small and i mean macro photography work for amp for quite a few years and did annual report work for them etc um, I worked for several engineering firms and did work uh, pretty much all over the country um, <clears throat> doing engineering projects and bridges and dams and uh, things of that nature. So my experience has been rather, rather wide and rather varied. So I bring that to you. <clears throat> I got sort of suckered into being a, a PP of A member by one, a former student of mine who turned out to be a master photographer. And one day when we were talking, she said, you'd grief if I could do it, you can do it. And my old mentor was Henry Troop. If any of you remember Sterling, when it was uh, on Derry Street, um, Henry always encouraged me to do the same thing. He said, you know, all you have to do is decide you want to do it. So, uh, I got involved in that as well and ended up getting my certifications and my master's and and that was uh, a lot of fun to do as well. And it didn't, got me didn't, Henry trip. Win, didn't Henry win some kind of award? Uh, <laughs> I got 
one of my images in their traveling master's program, which there's only a very, very limited number of those that are selected every year. So if you get to be in that group, why that's kind of a, a big, a big deal, if you will. And of course the master's degree, which is hanging over here on one of the walls you can't see. Um, and I also was a platform speaker at one of their national conventions in Las Vegas, which was uh, kind of interesting to do too. I did work with multiple cameras and a thing called in-camera masking, and that will mean absolutely nothing to almost anybody listening to me right now. But it was a way of combining images together before Photoshop. So we used to do some of the magical stuff and do it in the studio using different cameras and, and other special techniques. So um, <clears throat> it's it's been a fun ride. Then I did it for a little over 50 years. and. I've had enough of that. Thank you very much. <clears throat> I'm trying to spend most of my time uh, creating pictures that I've always really wanted to create. And that's my own personal images as opposed to working for somebody else. And I think most of you can understand that. You are the people who are out there shooting what you want to shoot, not what somebody else wants you to shoot. So although, you know, being challenged by somebody to take a picture of this and make it look good was never a bad thing so is that enough of that that yes, we certainly enough. appreciate you being willing to take the time to to share your knowledge and expertise with us thank you not not a problem i will offend as many people as i possibly can <laughs> <laughs> uh, i do teach today i have several students around the country and i do teach everything from basic photography up through um advanced processing in Photoshop and, uh, and and in Lightroom. So I do have a tendency when I judge to be a little bit on the critical side, which I understand some people uh, really appreciate and other people find to be just too detailed. Uh, if you're out there taking pictures and having fun and you go, oh, isn't this interesting, you know, and you want somebody to say, hey, nice shot, uh, that's fine and dandy. But I have always been critical. That's been one of the things that was, uh, I guess, part of the thing that made me uh, able to be successful was being very critical and particular about the way I did things. So I'll carry a little bit of that into my judging, and I try not to overdo it, if you will. But let's just see what we can uh, what we can do. Okay, and if I might comment on that note, that is the reason we ask Bryson to do the competitions because we want someone who's critical. We want to give you an honest opinion from someone who knows what they're doing. So this is done intentionally. It, it, the, the competitions are intended for your best work. If you have an image that, yeah, you just want to you know, know what somebody else has, thinks about it, you know, another photographer thinks about it, enter it in the image review. Save the competitions for your best work. Now, the ground rules as usual for the op competitions and image review are Bryson will critique, and you'll judge and give the score. And then I will call on the photographer to comment. We won't open it up for mm. discussion by, by members, okay? Until we get to the end, and, and then we will open it up and you can comment uh, to Bryson or a particular member of the club. Okay, Bryson. Very good. Okay. Um, <clears throat> one of the things that um, that you'll hear me say uh, quite a bit through the through the uh, process here is that I have a uh, I have an uncle who would walk into a room and say that picture on the wall over there is crooked and if you look at it you wouldn't believe him until, unless you went over with a, a level and looked at it and it was a quarter of a bubble off and he could see that from all the way across the room well I got that gene. So <laughs> you'll pardon me if I have a tendency to notice things that aren't as level and straight as maybe they could be. So uh, I'll bring that up once in a while, and I try not to overdo that either. But one of the things I think you can do, one of my favorite tools to work with is the crop tool. And when you're working with the crop tool, if you work with a grid on, you really have the opportunity to make sure that your verticals and horizontals and everything just line up the way that they should. And that horizontal lines that should be horizontal are as close as possible to uh, perfection. 
And uh, why would you care about that? Well, if you're going into a competition and you're into that competition against uh, 50 or 100 or 200 other photographers and their stuff is perfect and you're just a little bit off, guess you're going to end up at least in second place, if not 51 out of 50. Okay, so uh, the details are important and you need to pay attention to them. That's the way I look at pictures and that's the way I uh, tend to uh, uh, critique as well. So end of summer is picture number one. And I like this. I like this quite a bit. I think the, uh, the, the, the seeing is, is very good. I think the colors are very good. It's just a very attractive image. There's, there's nothing about this that comes out and screams and says, man, I wish you'd have done this differently. Um, from a compositional standpoint, and this is my personal uh, impression here, I think a little bit more room on the bottom and left would make me feel a little bit comfortable. I feel that the bottom left here with the boat is just a little bit on the tight side uh, for my my comfort. And um, But that is one of those elements where uh, I thoroughly understand that that could be a personal choice, so I'm not going to get overly critical on that. Um, and I think, Dennis, if it's okay with you, I'm going to go through all of the critiques first, and then I'll go back and assign numbers. Oh, okay. You're going to change things on yeah. that. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> okay. And then when I assign the numbers, then you can call for the comments, okay? Okay. Very okay. Good. Number two. <clears throat> For inebriated pianists only, <laughs> uh, I like this. I think it's a, uh, it's it's clever, and uh, I like uh, clever captions, if you will. Um, the the overall tonalities are interesting. This goes to dead black. Um, given the context of the photo, that's perfectly okay. Sometimes I sort of hesitate to let something go completely black unless it's obvious that there's a reason for it. And in this particular case, I think um, it's very obvious that being in the shadow and being a black subject to begin with, that this is a very appropriate level of contrast. So I have no issues with that. I think the, uh, the cropping is fine, maybe a little bit more on the bottom, but just a tiny bit. I don't like to crowd uh, the subject. So that's just my little passing thought on that one. Number three, where it returns. <clears throat> Compositionally speaking, I like what you're seeing here. I like the inclusion of the bench. I like the way that you've used the framing devices here. I think this uh, uh, runs pretty well. I don't have any issues with that at all. I like the the overall composition and I like the cropping. I do have an issue with something that looks to me like a, a slight effect of some kind has been added to it and I really don't think it enhances the image. I think it actually detracts from it because your eye spends too much time, your brain spends too much time saying what am I looking at and why and why don't I see this the way I expect to because when you're looking at something that is a an absolutely positively realistic image, there's no abstraction involved in it at all. Uh, when you're looking at something that's absolutely real, then when you introduce non-real into the image, you're challenging the person to believe what you're doing. And you have to convince the viewer to accept what you're doing as exactly what you wanted to do and then decide whether they like it or not. I think the uh, the added effect is uh, not particularly advantageous in this instance. <clears throat> they can be. <clears throat> okay, here we get into one of my um, one of my things about seeing things. Uh, when you're going to shoot something at an angle, um, my tendency, especially as an architectural photographer, is to make that angle severe enough to tell the viewer this is exactly what I wanted to do. 
So I would shoot this either a little bit further off to the left so that you have more perspective. And it almost looks to me like the horizontals were somewhat straightened, although this does have a a bit of a of a perspective to it. But if you're not going to shoot it off at an angle uh, enough to show that perspective, then you should shoot it symmetrical. And by symmetrical, I mean that the camera has to be in the middle of the picture. The camera is over here somewhere. Uh, and then the camera was turned to the right in order to encompass all the subject matter. And of course, the first thing you're going to say is, well, that's not going to work because if I stand right in the middle, I'm going to take a picture of myself in the windows here. Yeah, well, there are ways to get around that. And that just kind of goes to a whole other thing. But um, uh, if you're going to be symmetrical, then you need to be very symmetrical and very uh, careful about it. And if you're not, then you want to have enough perspective in that to convince the viewer that everything you're showing them is exactly what you want them to see. Uh, I like the black and white uh, conversion. I think it's well done. I think that you know maintaining the the dark tonalities here uh, shows that the uh, that the black and white conversion is being done with a little bit of respect, and that's a good thing. So I think uh, exposure wise and all that, um, it's it's well done. Number five, witching hour. This is clever. I think this is uh, a little different. Um, I, I, I could be convinced that it's just my screen or uh, my eyes or whatever. Um, I, I'm pretty sure that this is sharp. And uh, if it is, then uh, then I'm okay. I'm fine with everything from there. I, I won't uh, I won't get into that because sharpness is important. Then the added rain or snow or whatever it is that's crossing the streaks, uh, creating the uh, the atmosphere is is pretty well done. Uh, I guess the witching hour concept comes a little bit from some of the ethereal if you will up here at the top <clears throat> but the uh, overall impression i think is is pretty good and this is a good example too of being where the camera is so far off to the side that it's actually out here somewhere it's not in the picture so the camera is out here looking into the image and the perspective is very obvious and that's what i mean by being off center and being out of that symmetrical realm, if you will. Good one. This is nice. I have a, um, uh, I have a thing about color saturation, and I did, I do things that are a little bit weird, and I I took this image into Photoshop and just desaturated it about twelve percent and. I think I liked it a little bit better. I think the uh, the the one of the things you got to watch out for when you have things like this, especially blues. Uh, these blues have a tendency to be a little intense. Uh, you may like that. Um, I have a, a a history and a reputation for not liking oversaturated color. Um, also, I'm very, very sensitive to whether the saturation of any one given color in an image uh, is stronger than the other colors in the image, which would tend to make it dominate or gain attention. So uh, I try to be very, very careful with the balance, not only of the colors, but of the saturation of the colors and the intensity of the color, the brightness, et cetera, et cetera. Um, when you do, or when I did, just kind of desaturated a little bit, then these areas in the sun, if you will, um, became a little bit less cool. And I think I bought that a little bit better in terms of the balance of, uh, you know, where the where the white balance should be. If you actually take in white balance this, it becomes way too warm. But just uh, just kind of taking a little bit of the blue out of the whites here 
they're actually better neutrals back in here in the snow than there are here and that's not surprising because uh, when you shoot snow scenes the whites especially flat white areas have a tendency to pick up their color from the blue in the sky so uh, you have to be very careful about how you interpret that and uh, and how you make the viewer see uh, your image one of the things you can do if you're working in lightroom uh, when you bring up the loop view of the individual image, or if you're in the in the develop module, you can right click in the gray area out to the right and choose your level of dark, of gray. There's black and dark gray, and very dark gray, and very light gray and white. And <clears throat> one of the ways to uh, convince you yourself that you're doing something right when it comes to color balance is to uh, change one of those to a different shade of gray, particularly a lighter shade of gray, even white, and then see how the image holds up against that surround color. And that will help you um, balance your color, if you will. And I'm not saying this is off. I'm saying this is fine. It's, it's, just, uh, it's just a little bit uh, cool in its overall presentation for my personal taste. And that's there's nothing wrong with that. Seven, grooming. <clears throat> I suspect that this is a crop of uh, maybe even a fairly heavy crop. Um, uh, I could be wrong about that because if you were that close, why well, good for you. Uh, <clears throat> I, I like the shot. I think it's, it's different and it's unusual. And I think that that is just absolutely top drawer I, I like it um, um the image is either a little bit noisy or not completely sharp in terms of the, the possibility of some camera motion uh he looks like he's really still and it looks to me like there's something going on here but that could simply be the granularity of the of the capture uh so i'm not going to be overly critical of that on a compositional aspect, I think I would probably bring the bottom up a little bit just to uh, just just to tighten things up a little bit and, and get rid of some of the minor distractions at the bottom of the image. <clears throat> there isn't much to say about this. It's just delightful. It's it's so. The colors are saturated, but not oversaturated. The diversity of the colors here and the fact that their saturation is somewhat uniform, if you will, shows you how you can have good, vibrant, saturated colors in an image and not have it look overdone. Um, it's very easy to overdo something like this, to pump up the the saturation to the point where people start to, you know, blink their eyes. That's particularly true of uh, of the bright greens. But in this case, I think that it, uh, the, the variation of, of colors and the uh, overall saturation just works very, very, very well together. The uh, composition is very nice. I think the, the range of tonalities, the whites to blacks, the contrast overall, just comes together very, very well. So I don't have very many criticisms of this at all. I like it a lot. Here again, when we get to the crop tool, we have to be very careful of our horizontals. This, if you look at this image, and the first thing that jumped out at me is that it looks like it's rotated clockwise just a tiny bit. And that water line that runs through the bottom of these um even up here if you wanted to use it instead but the water line's the thing that's really important if you check that with a grid on you'll discover that there's a very very slight rotation and that makes it just sit to my mind just sits a little bit uncomfortably on the uh uh on the balance side of the composition <clears throat> I like the colors, I like the saturation, I like the overall composition, I like the feeling of the image, I think it's it's really well done. 
What do you say? It's good. <clears throat> when, you, when you get a shot like this, you know, and everybody says, uh, don't show me pictures of your kids or your dogs. <laughs> you know, they're great for you, um, but they don't mean anything to me. But this transcends that concept because this is not just a picture of your dog. This is a picture of a dog that is entertaining. And that's the difference that makes this a good shot. Um, nice capture. Uh, I'm glad you did it. And I'm glad you showed it to me. What can I say? Uh, exposure is good. Composition is good. Uh, the contrast is, is well managed. The colors are well managed. I just think it's it's a well done image. So, congrats. Nice job here. <clears throat> I notice that the horizontals and verticals are where they should be. The whites are where they should be. <clears throat> the balance of tonalities and everything is uh, is fine. And uh, you know, the, compositionally, you get you moved in and around to the picture it just comes together pretty well um i do work very very hard in my images to look for little tiny things that are going to get your eye and i fix them make them go away two things i would do in this picture is i would get rid of this antenna or whatever it is that's sticking up over here and i would fix this bump in the edge of the picture those are both very very simple and easy to do and uh, i think i would do that in order to just put that little final edge on the image to make it a little bit better but you know those are nitpicking little things i don't think they're big deals at all all right <clears throat> now here's another one that is extremely slightly rotated if you put a grid on this you'll discover that while this is very very close to center it's not perfectly centered and if you just look at the details here these are in real life are the same length and you've got closer here and further here so you do not have symmetry um, when you're shooting things like this you want to make sure that you shuffle your feet around and make sure you put yourself in the right place to begin with but then in post-processing you want to use the crop tool or the grid guides in order to make sure that you just really nail that symmetry um, and the symmetry in this particular case and other images like this where you're just looking right down the chute is exactly where you want to be you want to be dead in the middle of that and you want that to sit there and say, this is exactly where I'm supposed to be. Uh, this one is just off uh, enough to get my attention and that would cost you points, okay? Uh, I tend to judge uh, based on uh, old PP of A standards, which uh, start at 100 and go down from there. And you've got to, uh, um, you, I look at things by saying not how far up the scale you can go, but you start at 100 and then you start subtracting points for things that you find that aren't quite as good as they could be. And that's what determines your score, if that helps you think about the way I think about things. So the stuff of dreams. Nice colors and the pastels really, really work to support the butterfly who has all of the contrast and uh, you know the blacks are where the butterfly is and there aren't any anywhere else and uh this there's no question as to what you should be looking at um regardless of the point of focus so it, it just really really looks pretty nice um when you use the crop tool, you have a couple of options. Uh, one of them, of course, is the way that it just simply was shot. And then the others are specific crops like five by seven and eight by 10, et cetera. I like to crop independently and I just turn off the lock and I crop until I think the sides and the top and the bottom look like that's where they should be. You can use the guides. One of them is the rule of thirds. My preference is thing is called the golden rectangle. The golden rectangle would move this very slightly down towards center. <clears throat> I think his uh, 
bottom here would be approximately here on the flower. Uh, if you cropped, used the uh, used the golden rectangle instead of the rule of thirds, and um, and I that would I would do that, and I would lose some of the bottom. I would lose this, come up into this area, <clears throat> and then there's a lot of room on the left side here to crop as well. So I would come in on the left, and I would come up on the bottom, tighten this up, and put him in the uh, golden rectangle, and I think that would make a stronger composition and uh, bring even more attention, if you will, to the butterfly. So uh, that would uh, that would be my suggestion. I like the overall. I think I would probably be tempted to put a very, very light vignette on. Now, vignettes can be um, overdone very, very easily. Uh, my rules when I talk to uh, students is that the vignette should be felt, not seen. I know there's a lot of tendency in some uh, photography today to put heavy vignettes on and you can almost draw a line around where the edges are. And uh, that doesn't appeal to me. It can, anything can be correct in any given circumstance. But for the most part, I think vignettes are used to help you make sure that the viewer's eye goes to where you want it to be in the image. So a very, very slight vignette, um, just barely felt, not so much noticed, uh, is usually a good idea. We used to do burns in the dark room in order to do that because of the way that the physical aspects of enlarging lenses would always make the edges of the image slightly lighter than than the setter would be and you'd burn in order to compensate for that. And that's the the basic idea of a vignette, I guess, to begin with. Um, <clears throat> but I do uh, I do that and you can do that in, uh, in Lightroom in uh, raw processing. And my, my recommendation there is that you overdo it and then control how far in and how much diffusion the edges are going to have and all that stuff. And then you back off the amount until you just barely see it. And um, you probably will not end up going all the way back to zero. You'll probably discover that you're in somewhere between five and 12 percent uh, of putting a vignette on something like this. And you'll find that it does just has a tendency to hold the image uh, a little bit more together. So there you are. Now, shall we go back to number one and go with numbers? Sounds good. Okay. All right. <clears throat> I will go with a nine on this out of 10. Is that your, your numbers are up to 10? Yes. It's okay. We'll we'll, give, we'll go nine on this. And We'll talk to the maker, I guess. Okay, Rod, tell us about this image. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Yes, uh, I took this out at the Pine Grove Furnace at Fuller Lake. And uh, actually, when it comes to competitions, I'm just I'm just getting my feet wet. So you know, any advice you give me is is really appreciated. And I, I didn't realize that I I shouldn't have put my name on there too. <laughs> Well, I think you did a good job. Um, if this is your, if this is dipping your toes in the water, I look forward to seeing more stuff from you, Rod. <laughs> this is good. Thank you. Very, very nice. Number two, inebriated pianists. <laughs> okay. Um, with consideration for some of the background and not understanding how some of the effects might have been created either in the conversion to black and white or in the uh, processing of the image or post-processing burning, et cetera, et cetera. Um, uh, I think I'm gonna give this a, uh, a seven. Maker? Okay, Mary Eileen. Yes, that is mine. Um, thank you for the comments. 
Uh, this was a um, this was taken in um, a very small town in Italy called Matera, that, and this was on a portico, portico, and the other end of the portico had this beautiful, beautiful view of, of the um, the uh, city and the what what attracts tourists to the city. But as soon as I walked into the portico, all these people were walking towards the end to see this view, and I see this piano, and I can't take my eyes off it. <laughs> Why uh, is it here? What is it doing? There's a bottle on it. It kind of looks like I mean, there's nothing else on the portico to indicate why it's there. And so, yeah, I couldn't resist. I started taking shots and it probably looks strange to other people because they're at the other side of the portico taking all these views, uh, in all these views of these uh, city there and and what makes Matera famous. And, and I'm taking pictures of this abandoned piano. But um, thank you, thank you for the comments. I've done different things with this picture and mm -hmm. um, decided to, to submit this one and um, still want to work on it some more, but thank you. Yes, it's worth the effort. Uh, just to make sure that I understand, is this burning that you were doing over here? Yes, yes. Okay, okay. all right. Yes. Yeah, that's, I was, that, that's I was, one, you gotta make sure I don't see it. I yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was, this was taken in basically broad daylight and yeah. and um so but i tried to make it look a little more like it was happening in the evening or yeah. i was taking the picture in the evening so okay thank you very good yeah when you are uh, i have a friend who is uh, he's a very good photographer but he has one uh problem that he he goes out with an idea in mind of what he wants to shoot that day and then he comes back all disappointed because he didn't get what he went out after. And I told him, I said, what you have to go out after is a good photograph. And if you can ignore what everybody else is seeing uh, and look for something that's just a little bit different, you're probably the one that's going to come back with the better picture. And I think that's exactly what you did here. So good for you. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Good. Where it returns, number three, <clears throat> again, with considerations for uh, the added effect, I'll give this a seven. I think it probably could have been a, uh, a slightly higher uh, score without the effect and with some slight reduction in saturation. We have these... Uh, in these intense yellow greens, which for some reason or other always bother me. I that and this seems to be something that happens in Pennsylvania a lot. We get these yellow greens, and I always want to take the yellow out of the greens and make them a little bit bluer. I like Kentucky bluegrass, I guess, better than Pennsylvania grass. Um, but uh, uh, seven on the on the shot. Okay, thanks, Bryson. That's mine. And uh, that's very astute of you. I tried applying an Orton effect. That's what you're seeing. Uh -huh. So I'll, I'll back off on that and, and desaturate the greens a little bit. Uh, that was taken at Maasai University on the swinging bridge with a, a 15 millimeter wide angle lens. And uh, for those people who might be wondering about the title, yeah, it's a little strange, but here's where it comes from. I did a little research on the yellow breeches and there was a Native American tribe in this area called the Lenape, and they named the yellow breeches the Kalapatchink, which basically is interpreted as where it returns. Oh, very cool. Very yeah. cool. That's yeah, your I'm lesson for tonight. I'm familiar with the Orton effect, and I think sometimes uh, the, the key to using it is to limit it to the highlights as much as you possibly can so that when you get down into the midtones and the shadows, um, the effect is subdued to the point where uh, it becomes, again, one of those things where you feel it more than you see it. And I think if you have a problem here, it's because you see it as opposed to feeling it, if that makes any sense to you. It does. Yeah, I can appreciate that with the vignette, too, that I do. Yes, yeah. Yeah. very, Thank you. very good. Very okay. good. It's very nicely seen. I, I repeat myself, but I think, you know, your compositional in, inclusion here is excellent. It would have been real easy to ignore this and just 
shoot the creek, but I think this really balances it nicely. Well, thank you for that because I actually printed that for the calc exhibit as mm. an 11 by 14, but it required me to crop out the parking bench or the bench. As a result, I didn't like the composition and I didn't use it. <laughs> ah. Now, I, would, would it have I, helped if I had a woman with a red dress and a red umbrella sitting on the oh, park bench? Well, a woman in a red dress helps everything. So that's, <laughs> uh, I. I will say this about printing, by the way, I'm, I'm also a printer. And uh, uh, when I crop an image, I crop an image based on, like I said before, where I think it should end top, bottom, left, and right. Mm -hmm. And when I print, I do exactly the same thing. I don't print to a size because if you check it out, your five by seven, your eight by 10, your 11 by 14 are all completely different aspect ratios. Yeah. And what I will do is I will just simply print it and leave the border and then I'll have the mat cut to match the image and that eliminates that problem. So <laughs> yeah, there you, there you go. Good advice, yep. <clears throat> the entrance reflects its age. And of course this is calc and uh, the, old, uh, the old fire station. And I'm assuming Carlisle, I think that's absolutely correct. And uh, I like I said before, I like the black and white conversion. I like the overall look. I think I wish it were shot a little bit further off to the left so the camera ended up out of the picture, if you will. Um, and what I mean by that is if you if you symmetrically shot, moved the camera parallel to the building, you would have actually taken a picture in here instead of out here somewhere, if that makes any sense to you. But I think the uh, the conversion to black and white is excellent, every very well done. And the overall impression, the way it's seen and the composition is also very good and we'll give it an eight. Okay, Chuck. Okay, uh, thank you, Bryson, for your comments. Uh, I appreciate your critique. I uh, took this very quickly after I dropped off my photos for the, uh, comp uh, for the uh, ex exhibit and turned around and looked back. Cars had been parked in front of this building uh, the whole day. I couldn't get a parking spot there. <laughs> and Carlisle, if you know Carlisle, it's hard to get a parking spot. So I saw this reflection and it also was lit from the inside because you can see some of the artwork inside. So I just had to have the picture, pulled out my pocket camera and uh, my uh, cell phone and uh, snapped this turned it to black and white. And uh, uh, right after I took the picture, I couldn't take any more. I took four pictures, uh, cars parked right in front of the building. So no, of I, course, I couldn't get anything more. So this was I wanted to make the best that I could out of this and turned it to black and white did do some structural changes to it to yes. kind of bring it back. But very, was, very well seen and, and very well done. I think that's that's good. Well, thank you. <laughs> Now I will I will just say that uh, this is one of those, and I know some people say, "Well, it's my picture, you know, I don't care what you think." Uh, but in my images, I would eliminate this little sounds, interruption yeah. here. I would have gotten rid of the parking meter, and I would have gotten rid of the drain pipes over here on the left and on the right edge, if you will, uh, in order. Excuse me. In order to uh, just make the structure as uh, as perfect, if you will, as it could possibly be, but then I don't mind spending all afternoon on a picture. So yeah. <clears throat> I will try that and go back and make those edits. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Any really good picture is worth the extra time, and uh, you know, uh, I don't know about you, but I got nothing better to do in the afternoon, so I. <laughs> work on pictures uh, i like this i like the way it's done uh, i like the way it's seen uh, i'm taking another look with uh, with a pair of good glasses on here and yes the bench is sharp so no complaints there um i i wish some of the brighter larger lumps of white were not there and believe it or not i would work uh to take those out uh, that's that kind of thing is bothersome to some people, but it's not as hard as you think. Uh, and I tend to be a minimalist, so I want to see anything that supports the image and nothing that doesn't. So I probably would have uh, just worked to, to minimize uh, some of those interruptions uh, 
but um, again, that's we're down to nitpicking. I think this is uh, interestingly seen and well uh, well done. So there you go. We'll give that an eight. Okay, David. Yeah, hi, uh, Bryce and uh, Dave Marchetto. And um, thanks very much for those, uh, those thoughts. Uh, you know, interesting. I did take quite a few of the uh, snow, uh, snow streaks from yeah. the uh, upper uh, left and right to sort yeah. of round it off. So yeah. I, I really, you know, hear what you're saying. I was going for high contrast. That bench was a real bear because uh, it's, it's PVC, it's plastic. Ah, uh, yeah. So, so um, every which way I looked at it, it was throwing a wrench into my uh, into my vision of it. Uh, there's not really any texture to it. It just you know reflected everything, <clears throat> and um, I ended up uh, liking the wall quite a bit. Uh, so I left a lot of the mid tones uh, there as that really hot light was uh, shining <laughs> almost straight down, and you can see the harsh shadows on those bricks which during the day i mean it just looks like a flat wall right yeah i i like what you did with the bench and if that had been just uh solid white or something that would not have been good at all it really does have some character and that makes the picture so yes good for you thank you yeah, sure david enough. was that a difficult exposure for you it was, Dennis. Uh, the, it's the one and only. Uh, it's uh, with an iPhone. I'm a fair weather photographer and it was pouring rain and snow. <laughs> so that's the uh, image I went with. The first, uh, ex you know, the exposure was really flat, Dennis, and had way too much um, mid-tones to it. So I squeezed them out and uh, just kept uh, at it finally deciding on a really high contrast um, vision of this. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Well, it's interesting. As far as we know, that's the, well, that's the second uh, uh, cell phone image that we've had submitted. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, you know, Dennis, it's right after your, uh, your session on, uh, on, you know, using, using the iPhone. So a shout out to you. And I, I think uh, Bryson uh, told me a while ago, I seem to remember uh, one of his thoughts was if it really doesn't help your image, sort of you know, <laughs> leave it out. So uh, really quite a bit of this uh, around the edges, especially is, uh, is left out. And I tried to get sort of a semblance of if you kind of stand back maybe a bit of an oval of sorts and uh, that's what i ended up with with a really harsh vignette on it uh, by the yeah. way yeah yeah well this is one of those instances where you know even a heavy vignette works so it's not a problem it's a solution actually so uh well done yeah appreciate nice. those thoughts thank you bryson, nice. bryson for any members who might be concerned that that, that light is uh, overexposed in the image would you comment about that this <clears throat> well <clears throat> exposure is <clears throat> something that a lot of people have problems with the 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 easiest thing from my perspective to do is to say expose for the brightest important part of the subject um, a light source like the light itself is going to be pure white. There's just, you know, it's, it, there's no options there. It is the light source, so it's going to be pure white. If I had my druthers right underneath it, maybe would be less than 100% pure white. Uh, but there's just enough of a differential there that it doesn't make me mad, so there's no problem. Um if the light source itself goes pure white, well, that's that's the way it goes. The sun will be pure white. Uh, reflection off of a bumper will be pure white uh, and should be. Um, but if there were something in here that were pure white, I think that would be an issue. Uh, I have to give Dave extra credit for the fact that if it was shot with a cell phone and you managed to get this kind of tonal uh, range out of it, why uh, good for you, because that would be uh, not difficult, but it would be uh, a consideration with any other camera in order to decide how to expose it in the first place. And that's of course, where you take several bracketed shots and then you decide after the fact, which one 
provides you with the information you have to have. So that, this is exceptionally well done, especially for a cell phone image. Okay, that, that does warrant a follow-up question though with Dave. Dave, did you shoot it as an HDR image or, or a RAW or both? What was the first part of it uh, before was HDR, it Dennis? Was, was it shot HDR? Or, or let me just ask, was it shot as a RAW file, like a DNG? Uh, well, whatever the um, cell phone uh, develops, uh, Dennis, I think it was only a few megabytes, like maybe two or three. Okay, use so, it. So I iPhone? did not, yeah, I would say it was certainly not, you know, size of the raw files I'm used to. And maybe that helped me with the the, con the high contrast. I, I wasn't sure, but I did seem to get a lot more detail out of that wall than I would have expected. Yeah. If you, if you go back, I'd be curious. I bet it's an HEIC file <clears throat> and, and the phone probably automatic shot it as an HDR. So it probably took multiple images and composited them within the phone. Yeah. Oh, very, yeah, very interesting. Yeah. Sure, sure. I would, I'm, I would agree with that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Sure. That's a, that's very important to me to hear, Dennis uh, and Bryson. Bri Bri I, I, I will check on that. Maybe do a little more research and maybe some follow up questions because. Okay. It, yeah, it surprised me with the dynamic range on that wall. I, I just really liked it. Yeah. yeah and just as a brief review, since uh, David mentioned my talk, if you're shooting with the native camera on an iPhone. Okay. You can, if it's a pro model, you can go pro raw, which is a DNG file. Now Apple adds a lot of processing to it, but it is a raw file, but that's only available on the pro models. Otherwise you're shooting either a JPEG or an HEIC. And I highly recommend that you shoot HEIC, not, not JPEG okay, on your iPhone. If you opt to use an alternative camera, <clears throat> instead of the native camera, like if you download the Lightroom camera or one of the, the Halide or many of the other third-party cameras, then you can use a straight DNG and the phone does not apply additional processing to it. Okay, thanks. Very good, Dennis. Very good. <clears throat> yes, I like this. The lines, uh, nothing says to me that I need to be terribly uh, concerned. I think when I, if I'd put the crop on this, I would just make sure that you have a, a reasonably close to level here so that people don't complain. Um, you know, this one of those things where you, you look at the picture and you don't, you say something isn't right. Uh, you, you don't always know, oh, well, this is just, you know, slightly crooked. But your brain is still, you know, half of your brain, the brain that you don't pay attention to <laughs> on the right side has a tendency to look at things and go, ah, you know, I wish this were a little different. Um, this this is close enough that uh, nothing bothers me here. And the thing you got to worry about, too, is that horizon lines on lakes have a tendency to be deceptive because they can go off in perspective and that will throw your thinking off as much as anything else. So. Uh, I think this is uh, as fine as as uh, as it is done. Uh, this will also get an eight. I think it's a very good image. Okay, Janice Williams. <clears throat> Thanks for your comments. Um, I um, I actually in my brain did not think about the difference between um, an uh, image uh, review and a competition. And I probably would not have submitted this and might have submitted something else if I had thought about that, because um, I've never submitted for a competition before. So um, I- It worked uh, out okay, Janice. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, but I appreciate your comments. And um, this was actually, uh, it, it was December 19th and it was, uh, it, it was right before Christmas and it was um, the very, probably the uh, first of five shots I took with my brand new XT4 at the time. Um, and so, uh, I, so I looked at it and went, oh, I love this camera. Um, so it, it's, um, thanks for your comments. I appreciate it. Very nicely done. Grooming. Um, I'm going to give it a seven. Uh, I would, if, or, if I could get 
a little bit sharper on the eye, a little bit sharper overall, et cetera, and a little bit of cropping. I think I may give it a little bit slighter, slightly higher uh, thing. There's a couple of little distractions here I think I would have gotten rid of um, and up, up here. Uh, but I think it's overall uh, pretty well done. You clean up these uh, little little marks and stuff that are in the image that don't really do any do you any good. Um, but I think it's uh, it's an extraordinarily interesting capture and certainly different. And uh, kudos to the photographer for seeing it coming and and capturing the moment. George Ryan and Bryson, that's mine. And I uh, thank you for your critique. <clears throat> I should point out to you that this is not a crop. No, good. That's a whole thing. Uh, I zoomed in. It is not cropped. Yeah. What well, was the shot with a longer lens, or, or were you actually that I close? Zoom lens. I had a zoom lens. Ah, uh -huh. okay. A okay. zoom lens. Yeah. Am not? Am I not coming through clearly? Oh, uh, that's more my ears than your. <laughs> it's more my ears than anything so not a problem good george but those two those two little places that you uh referred to i didn't notice them until tonight uh there was another horse there which oh. i uh cloned out uh okay yeah you got, sometimes when you use the clone stamp or you use the the uh um the, the fill thing uh it comes to mind at the moment you get these little artifacts and i can see it there's one that runs here and it's one that runs here so i i know what you're talking about and you have to be really careful because they'll leave those behind and that's what usually happens you don't notice it until somebody else points it out or you go and you make a print out of it and then it jumps out and says oh, i should have paid attention but good very good george okay, okay now I've, I've got a question yeah uh the original was raw. Yeah. A raw file. Uh, this one, which I posted, is an edit TIFF. Now, I have a problem when I send pictures either to uh, Topaz or to, uh, 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 or, or to uh, Topaz Clear, AI Clear, or whether I send it to uh, Photoshop. I never know what the heck I've done with it afterwards. I know I sharpened it a little bit. I know I know I got the uh, I cloned the other horse out, but I don't know what else I might have done. And there's no way I have a record of that. How do you keep a record of what you've done when you send out of Lightroom an image, either to Topaz or to Photoshop, and then bring it back? Well, if you if you send it out to Photoshop and then save it, it should go back to Lightroom and your evidence should still be there. So you shouldn't have any problem with that. If you export it to another program, then you lose that information. And there's really uh, no way to keep it except that your original will still be there. What you want to do is you want to save it coming out of the other program with a different name so that you don't override your original image. So uh, you... uh, no, no, I, I, I have the original image. Right. In fact, I'm looking at it right now. Right. And then I see the edit TIFF image, which I put up right beside it with the uh, comparison thing in uh, Lightroom. Right. But I can, I have no evidence left from what was done, I presume it was in Photoshop because I cloned out the other horse, but I have no evidence of what else I might have done uh, in Photoshop. In Photoshop. Yep. Well, okay. Well, one of the things I'd recommend is that if you're working in Photoshop, um, uh, you should save in addition to then exporting it back as an, you're getting it back as an edit TIFF. But right. you, you could save it in Photoshop as a PSD and then your layers and any corrections that you made to it in Photoshop would be evident to you. So you want to kind of save it as a Photoshop document PSD in addition to just simply saving it back to Lightroom and that will preserve your evidence for you. 
and, and 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 then you would take that picture back into Photoshop, and there you you'd have the record of what you did. Is that correct? You mean back into Lightroom? No, no, no. Uh, uh, from Lightroom, take the PSD back into Photoshop, so it might have a record of what you've done. Uh, no, your your PSD has to be saved in Photoshop, and then you just save the image back to Lightroom. That's where you get your edit TIFF. But the PSD, if you put, you can put a PSD into Lightroom. That's not a problem. Um, then I guess if you if you reopen it into Photoshop, yeah, you would still have your evidence. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, that's what I'm concerned about. Yeah. I don't know how to save anything in Photoshop. In Photoshop. Yeah. It all comes back to Lightroom. Yeah. If, if I could add my two cents. Yeah. Uh, George, I'm not sure what your workflow is in Photoshop. <clears throat> But if you take it, if you put each individual action that you do on a separate layer and you layer each label appropriately, like if you're sharpening, you put that on a sharpen layer. If you're blurring, you put on a blur layer. When you, as Bryson said, when you maintain your layers, then when you take that image from Lightroom back into Photoshop and you've maintained your layers, each image will indicate what you've done to that image. That's correct. That's but correct. only by going back into Photoshop to see right. it, right? Right. Because like when you're not going to keep my layers. Yeah, and and the history panel is lost when you exit uh, Photoshop. Correct. Exactly. Like when you're in Lightroom, you can look at the his the history of it, and in Photoshop, when you have that image open, you can look in the history panel. But once you've gone, once you've exited the file, that history panel is cleared. It it just says imported from Photoshop. What's that? Okay, thank you. Yeah, you'd go from Lightroom if you're going into Photoshop and then save it as a PSD or a TIFF. You'll bring it back into Lightroom. Now, here's the key. When you go from Lightroom back to Photoshop, make sure, and it says edit in Photoshop, and it'll give you a couple options. Make sure you pick original. Right. If, okay. you pick, if you pick go back into Photoshop, you know, as, as and, and, uh, or if you pick any of the other options, it'll flatten the file. Right. Right. So, so you, save the you, original. And you lose the information. Yeah. Yeah. You want to okay. always work in layers and you always want to preserve those layers as much as you can. That's where your detail is. Good. Yeah. Okay, but that's a good question. You. I'm sorry to take up so much time, but that's probably something that other people uh, uh, have problems with too. Oh, agreed. It's a good question because I've run into the same issue. And what I do sometimes in Lightroom, I'll go into like uh, in the library module I'll, on the right hand side, I'll go over the metadata, like in the caption. Yes. And I'll, I'll actually manually put in something that I did. So I, I remember that. Yeah. Okay. Very and, good. It, but it's a lot of work. Anyway, let's move on to the next one. There we go. Dreams of Autumn Past. Well, I already said that I like this, and I think uh, I'll, this will be my number 10 image for the night. Oh, very nice. And this is uh, this is where, uh, if, if it were not applied, if this were simply natural, I would say wonderful. But if this is the Orton effect, this is the very nice application of it uh, to the highlights, and it just does, it has much, much less effect as it goes down through the midtones into the darks, I think this is uh, this is a premier image. This is great. I'd be printing this and hanging on the wall. She did. Congratulations, Elaine Shook. I hope she's here. Elaine, are you with us? Oh, yeah, she's not with us at the moment. She did print that because it's on the display as part of the Calc exhibit. Wonderful. Uh, Glad you're to on the. On the first floor, when you go up the steps to the second floor, it's on the wall as an introduction to the exhibit. Yeah, and this is this is lovely. It's tell, beautiful. Tell her, congrats. This is the way to go. This is great. Good yeah, stuff. She must be, uh, you know, preoccupied with something else, and I'm sure she'll watch the recording. All is calm. Number nine. Uh, I already talked about the uh, just leveling this thing out. I think is. Uh, is the only thing that I would do. That very, very slight uh, rotation bothers me a little bit. Um, so this will get a nine, but I really do like the image. Who's the maker on this one? Okay, it's Joan Smith. Hello. Um, first of all, thank you very much. Um, 
This is off the coast of Cedar Key in Florida. And um, a friend and I were there to practice our long exposure on the pier. And so we were there early and this, I guess is an old pier that was out in the, in the water. So we took this while we were waiting for the sun to go down. But I have to say, I normally, the, I'm really uh, try to get my images straight. That's the first thing I do. And I, I don't know, I guess maybe I didn't check this one right or uh, I get what you're saying about the water line though that's a good point of reference for yes. that for yeah. the horizon that's, yes that's that's the thing that will will yes. show up the most yeah very good well yeah. you know if uh, you could be excused for a little minor detail but you know this is this is worth the effort because it's uh um it's really really nicely done and I'm a big fan of the long exposure photography so always have been so so it's way back when it was, uh, uh, I remember when long, long exposure photography was considered uh, a bit of a strange thing that only amateurs did. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> really important people started doing it. And now it's a big deal. But uh, yeah, nicely done. The, the effect is great. The picture is good. That's all great, you need. Thank you. Um, yeah, well, I, that's just was the question I had was that um, the um, long exposure was done okay and everything. I, I've only done long exposure about three times. So I uh, took a whole bunch of pictures there and I uh, like this one the best probably. I think with with anything like this, the long exposure or anything else, your decisions to make uh, a choice of aperture and shutter speed and ISO, et cetera, et cetera, you'll know pretty much right away when you start looking at it on your computer right. if you've done something right. And that at that point in time, it's just a good image and the details become less important. Right. And the other thing I, well, there were two other things I liked. I liked the bird sitting there. Yes. And then <laughs> they, um, actually the, these colors were almost exactly what they were that night. There was like not a lot of color yeah. changes and stuff. And as soon as I saw them, I liked them. So. Yes, I like the subtleness of that. That's very, yeah. very nice. Yeah, so that's Good. all nature. And one guy <laughs> up on the top. <clears throat> yep. Thank you very, thank you very much. Sure. Well, like I said, <clears throat> it's just, it's entertaining and it's great and it's a good capture. And uh, um, this would be another 10 for me. This is, uh, this is just really well done. I love the, 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 the control over exposure so that the highlight values are good and the detail in the highlights is good. That's something that is very easy to lose and uh, you didn't lose it. So you get kudos for that. This is just very, very well done. Congratulations, Rich Scar. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I'm a, I'm not a, I'm a meat and potatoes guy, so I don't shoot food photography and I have no animals. <laughs> this is my, this is my nephew's uh, dog of famous, the name is Clyde, the famous Bonnie and Clyde, there were two of them, one has passed. And my, my nephew is also I visited recently, but this is a sucker shot because this dog is constantly photogenic. So, but thanks for your comments. Yeah, I was Ab absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. Good. Oh, Cole brothers. <clears throat> I like it. I like the way it's done. Um, I like the composition. I think the, uh, the exposure is, is well uh, managed, et cetera. I think if anything, it's sort of like a documentary image as opposed to an exciting image. Um, so, uh, it, it, there's, it's kind of hard to, uh, um, to say you know it, it has its place but i think it's very very well done so uh, i think i'll stop while i'm ahead and uh, <laughs> we'll give it a nine and <laughs> move on from there who shot this okay steve Jedlin. uh thank you very much for the comments uh we had taken it obviously at the grand canyon we had gone out there in april to get warm and it snowed but it ended up creating some really nice pictures. But I had read about the Cold Brothers Studios and how they would go down with their box cameras and photograph travelers on the Bright Angel Trail that you can see in the lower left-hand corner, barely. 
And I wanted to get this shot with a, I used a range finder and a fixed 35 millimeter lens. So I had to get myself in a position where I could get the trail and yet the Cole Brothers studio in a way that it would kind of reinforce each other. So it worked out well for me. Very good picture and very good storytelling with the picture. That's the whole idea. Good. Very good. One more, or only one more. Um, <clears throat> I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, excuse me. This is pretty good. I, we're going with an eight on this. I like the uh, I like the overall composition, the way it's seen. Uh, with the comments, of course, made a little bit earlier, and uh, I think I say it gets an eight. So let's go from there. Okay, Kurt Wilkie. Yeah, hi, thanks for your comments. Uh, this was taken in uh, Ottawa, Canada, and this is the uh, beginnings of the uh, Rideau Canal system, which goes from Ottawa to Kingston. Canada uh, commissioned the uh, British to make this canal system to move uh, supplies without uh, having to use the St. Lawrence River in fear that the uh, United States would attack them. So uh -huh. this, this created a wonderful fishery, which I enjoy every summer. Very nice. Very well done. Okay, and the last one, the stuff of dreams. Um, we talked about, I'm just a little bit curious as the bouquet uh, says something to me, and I'm just, I want the photographer to tell me what uh, what they use to shoot it. Um, I'm going to give this an eight, uh, and let's hear how it was done. Okay, George Kurzik. I'm here. Uh, this was done using a 40-year-old Nikon reflex lens, 500 millimeter. Uh -huh. and I like the bokeh effect. This is pretty much as shot with some, obviously, cropping, some uh, brightness contrast, but... I like the effect. Uh, this was shot at an organic uh, flower farm, a uh, very long line of flowers. So I knew I could get a lot of out of focus, which was what I was looking for. Yeah. And I pre-aimed on that. Uh, I was, of course, I was on tripod and pre-aimed at that flower. There was a number of uh, butterflies and that's the shot I was after. That's the way to do it. You plan ahead and you, uh, you wait for the opportunity to come to you and then you Take advantage of it. Very nicely done. Very good. All right. Well, thank you very much. I okay. guess, Dennis, I'll turn Oh, thank you, Bryson. Now, we're going to ask for comments from uh, participants. But before we do, would you please uh, unmute yourself? And we'll give Bryson the traditional round of applause. Yay. Thanks, Bryson. <laughs> thank you. Hey, thank thanks, you. Bryson. Thanks. Good job. Thank you, Bryson. Okay, guys, let's uh, open it up. Do you have a uh, comment or question for Bryson or any of the photographers? Who's that? I have one question. Chip. On, yeah, on that uh, shot of the building, the cap building, whenever Bryson, you said to uh, center it and take it from uh, the middle uh do you have to worry about the reflection there uh i always thought you take it from the side to reduce the uh, reflection in the glass you mean the calc building? yeah the calc building right well obviously if you're moving off to the side you don't have your reflection in the glass so that's it becomes not, not an issue um of course not all buildings have mirrors or glass right in the front of the building so that's you know becomes uh, less of an issue the so you you don't have a lot of options with that building you really can't stand dead center and take the picture unless you want a portrait of yourself <laughs> so my suggestion there would be that if that's the way you want to do it you just move further off to the side so that you're uh, your perspective on the shot is obvious that you know that you're shooting that at an angle for a reason. Okay. Uh, am I getting the point across or you have another concept that you're, I'm missing here? Well, uh, I, I've been told, you know, when, when you're taking a picture and there's glass there, uh, 
you're going to get reflection not just to yourself but you know maybe reflection other reflections in there <clears throat> and i thought you mentioned to take it head on but i didn't know if, you know uh, what you meant exactly you're saying taking it more off to the side yeah. or if you took it straight on could you eliminate if you were if if you were included could you eliminate yourself and and keep everything else there there are there are ways to manage that but you have to have a really really good reason to go to the effort because it would take I'm I'm thinking it would take a minimum of three different photographs and then some work in Photoshop in order to get rid of the reflection. And uh, you would have to, uh, if in my mind, you'd have to have a paying client to make that much of an effort. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, so your bottom, bottom line then is to right. take it off the side. It's easier more. to just walk off to the side and, and you know, shoot it in perspective and, and make it easy on yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, sounds good. Thanks. Sure. Could, could you possibly get the camera down really low so your reflection wouldn't show like you're you're sitting on the ground? And I know your perspective is going to be off then you're going to get keystoning and then correct the keystoning in post. Yeah, well, correcting the keystoning would be an, uh, uh, by default from me. Yes, I would put you could put the camera low put the timer on walk away and then the only thing you have to deal with is a very very small reflection of the camera maybe or maybe it would go away completely if you could get low enough i don't know i don't remember how far down those glass panels go no. um uh i yes i've actually done that where and then the other thing you could do too is sometimes if you just have the camera and a tripod leg to deal with a little bit of cloning will make it go away so Depends on how hard you want to work. Right. Okay, thanks. Anybody else? Questions, comments? Hey, okay. Dennis, this is Don Uvic. Uh, yes, Don, you got the floor. Yeah, just real quick. Um, thank you very much for letting me be a part of this club. I am very impressed with the quality of the work. Um, uh, not that I question that to begin with because I knew the caliber of the photographers but uh, I'm really excited to be a member and uh, look forward to uh, participating in future events again so thank you and thank you Bryson you were top notch as usual thanks Don we're glad to have you anyone good to else see you. good to see you after so long Don <laughs> let me remind you while you're thinking about that that uh, I will put a follow-up email out to everyone tomorrow and I'll include the link to the video of tonight's meeting in case you'd want to you know, go over it again, review it, or for anybody who uh, wasn't able to attend tonight. Uh, and with some other information about upcoming events. Uh, oh, and the meeting next Monday night. You don't want to forget about that. That'll be part two of the panel discussion. Okay, last chance. Any questions or comments? Okay. Very good. Thanks to all those who submitted images, and thanks to Bryson for a wonderful critique uh, on the on those okay thank you and good night thanks, thanks bryson. bryson thank you nice. thanks again bryson thanks bryson, thanks, bryson. Thanks, bryson. Thanks very much